welcome folks this is jacob shoop filling in for tom o'brien i hope you all are having a wonderful day uh, a lot of news coming out let's take a look first just what the market's doing right now in the es mini uh, we were at 5051 so still on that kind of sell-off uh, sweet levels we can get to in it the russell down about 0.12 percent currently trading at 1959 the nqs at 17,574. And the Dow futures uh, back up that 38,000 level. Um, it seems, you know, probably to finish out the week, uh, we're still going to be down. Um, it looks like today we'll finish down, and then most likely tomorrow that trend won't uh, change. We have some news coming out as well regarding retail sales, and they are up. And that is not always a great sign uh, for inflation. So we'll kind of see how all of that works out and what the market kind of thinks. Uh, the gold contract trading just below 2400 or at 2398 Of course, we had a pretty big rise on it and a few down days, but that's kind of to be expected uh, as well uh, when you have such an uh, increase uh, that gold has seen. Silver at 2839 and then copper, man, up 2% today. We're at $4.42, uh, which is awesome. This is making super highs, uh, which is great for that contract. Crude oil, of course, down at 82.14, which is super nice. Uh, we had a we had more supply than I think people had anticipated. Uh, even I think it's today, uh, but U.S. government is reinstating an embargo on Venezuelan oil. I talked about this a little while ago. The whole idea was that if they were going to promise free elections or whatever, uh, that they would lift the embargo. Well, that lasted for a little bit in the Maduro decided just to jail his opponent, <laughs> you know, old habits die hard, right? Uh, we have Tesla right now trading down 275, trading 2.75% at 151.11. Uh, of course, a lot of people got fired. And then you had uh, an investment bank come out and say that the robo-taxi focus is not what Tesla needs to be doing. I also think as well, you Elon Musk is such a polarizing character, and he definitely did go after some what influential people um and I, I think to an extent that there there are politics involved in that but but overall uh you, you know they have some operational issues of course the competition they face from china going forward is is massive and, and elon did uh, you know kind of underline that um so I, I think there's a lot of different things kind of going on here with tesla uh, still dynamics at 136.10 down two percent today and the dollar at 106.13 uh, Let's take a look here at TSM. So we're down about 5% today. So what's going on? So the first quarter profits rise at 9% and that beats forecasts. Obviously this is, uh, let's see here. All right, so from January to March, net profit rose uh, 6.98 billion US dollars. Um, that's up quite a, Quite a good amount in uh, Taiwanese dollars. It was 225.5 billion, up from 206.9. Uh, the profit beat uh, estimates, which is a weighted forecast that they had going against it. This is uh, first quarter revenue rose 13 percent year on year to 18.87 billion, uh, better than the company's previous forecast of 18 billion uh, to 18.8. Uh, the company last week announced first quarter revenue in Taiwan dollars. It was good. Why? Why are we down? If they're beating estimates, well, essentially what they said is they're seeing a future where iPhones and PCs are going to kind of go through just a little bit of a downturn. Uh, they're not going to be producing as much, and that's you know going to impact uh, the company uh, quite a bit. Uh, so we're seeing kind of you know five percent drop here. I still think you know, and I honestly I am looking at it you know somewhat significant volume uh, as well. However, I, I think you know this, this company is going to stay and the semiconductor is going to stay regardless of what it is whether it's training ai whether it's going into all of our little devices uh these companies will remain and it might be an interesting you know obviously i always say take your analysis on it i always really suggest reading financials as well especially if you're going to be a long-term holder of something uh but i think tsmc is is solidified in the market and they're not going anywhere and this might be an interesting buy opportunity as well. Now, of course, the heavy volume is interesting. Uh, you could also say this is coming from, you know, people have been holding the bag around this level, right? And you get this news, like, okay, the first next quarter might not be so great. Maybe the quarter after that might not be so great. 
So why am I holding this thing? I've been riding it for the whole time and maybe I just want to take some profit on it. This could be uh, what's going on uh, with it. So somewhat interesting to look into with that. Uh, we had Blackstone, they've done uh, quite well. So let's take a look. Blackstone earnings rise as the value of investments climb. Right now, of course, they are down. Uh, they reported higher quarterly earnings as the value of investments rose across its major strategies. Uh, the private equity giant's infrastructure portfolio led the way, climbing 4.8% in the quarter, due in large part uh, to big bet on data centers. Blackstone's private wealth business has the highest inflows since 2022, uh, raking in $8 billion as resurgent public markets gave investors the renewed confidence uh, and wherewithal to invest in private markets. Uh, of course, these are also, you know, relatively uh, safe investments, too, that Blackstone gets into. Uh, net income was $847.4 million, or a buck eleven a share. And that was nearly 10 times the $85.8 million it earned in the first quarter of 2023. Distributable earnings were $1.27 billion. Uh, this item totaled $1.25 billion a year earlier. Uh, Blackstone raised $34 billion. Uh, a large portion of that, around 60%, came from credit strategies. And then assets under management were $1.06 trillion, up from $1.04 trillion in the prior quarter and $991 billion a year earlier. Now, I, I do think, too, yeah, like you have things going into more like fixed income. Obviously, bonds are going up. I'm not sure what the money market funds are doing right now, but you know, a lot of people are transitioning back into some of the bonds uh, as well, especially at these prices. Uh, but, but I do think people who are willing to take on a little bit more risk, but not a lot, uh, will go for some of these private equity groups going on. And, of, and of course, um, you know, interest in a lot of things helps as well with that. I wanted to pull up something uh, regarding Tesla. So obviously, they've been focusing on robo-taxi. A lot of people don't uh, necessarily like that, but the... One of their major competitors in China has seen, you know, uh, two to three times increase. We talked yesterday um, how Volkswagen is going to start building out some more uh, of their vehicles there, and that will be for the Chinese market. It remains to be seen if that goes out of it. Uh, but the point is, you know, these Chinese car companies are going to be uh, pretty competitive. And you had Xiaomi, um, that electric car sales three to five times higher than expected. And it just kind of shows you that the Chinese economy is really robust right now and there's not any brakes being put on it, and that's a little bit different for the West. Um, so folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. We have Tim Ord on as well. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keck's 